Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Carlsden Farm, where we now have the awesome third-person camera mod available in the game. Oh, it's so nice to finally be able to see your player character. Woohoo! This is a mod I think Giants should have put in the game at release, especially now we've got the whole wardrobe and fancy outfit system. The fact that we can now see ourselves in third person is great. You can actually see our farmer as we run around on foot. Although you still have to stare at the crosshair icon on the back of his head. Right, what am I doing in today's video? Well, as it's 10 to 4 in the afternoon, um, probably not a great deal. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think where I got to. I finished seeding and rolling field 2. Uh, where's all my tractors? Uh, ah, they're over here. That's right. I'm in the process of cutting grass, ladies and gents. And I've elected... I've elected to do hay. So I'm widespreading. I've already mowed the secret meadows. And I've actually swathed those. So I'm going to pick those up loose. And I'm going to do... Put those in the silage bunker thing. At the cows. However, I'm going to get myself a tedder. In fact, I've got a tedder. It's on the back of the Lamborghini. And I'm going to use that to make some hay, which we can put into storage. And I'm going to do this, these three fields here. So the one next to me there, and the other little one that we never actually kind of went into and touched and did anything with. But this field mows a little bit awkward because it's kind of on a slope. But yeah, I've mowed the um, secret meadows. I did those after I'd finished seeding and ploughing. Uh, seeding and rolling, should I say, not ploughing. Field one. Well, yeah, we got the third person mod released today on the mod hub. Game changer. Love the third person mod, especially for role playing minded people. It's a very good mod that lets you see your character as he's walking about. And I say, I can't believe it's not something that wasn't in the base game because um, when Giants added the wardrobe feature. It would have been nice to have been able to have seen your character yourself. The only time you ever get to see your character is when he's in a vehicle. And you zoom in. If you go first person, obviously you don't see yourself. Um, so it was always something that was like, mm, it's a bit strange that you can't get a third person view in the game. But we had the mod obviously released for um, Farm Sim 19. And now the mod author has brought it over the field, um, to Farm Sim 22. Like I say, it's available to download on the mod hub. Um, released today. There was a couple of other mods that released today that I was going to have a bit of a look at. Um, there's a, 
a white van, Lizard Rumbler, from DD Mod Passion that released today as well, which sounded rather interesting, because it's a white van that apparently does auto-loading of pallets and stuff. And I downloaded it, and I was activated it, and I was going to load it up on this save, actually, and have a look at it. Because obviously I've got pallets of stuff that I need to move and a better way I need to find a better way of moving them and a white van sounds like it would be ideal. Um, however, when I came to ac activate it and start the game, it then gave me a message that you need to install a whole load of other mods. Um, and I was like, mm, I don't really want to be committed to these other mods that interfere and mess with other things like Bale Twine add-on. And stuff like that and I was like mm, yeah I don't really want that I just want a white van that will pick up my pallets and help me move my pallets so at the moment I'm passing on that I don't know if I'm going to use that white van mod because I don't want to install the additional I don't want to have to start putting net netting and twine and straps and stuff and string and stuff like that into my balers you know I don't want that level of realism in the game. And then I feel like I'm playing Straw Harvest add-on mod or something. If I'm having to put stuff in the balers, build them all. So I don't know why. I don't know why you can't just get the white van with the um, auto-load function. Why the, the mod maker... He, he's released two mods. He's released a standard version of the white van, which doesn't have any of the auto-load functions and stuff like that because he's done it for... to make it compatible with consoles. And then he's released a, a Lizard Rumbler with additional features mod for PC players. And that's the one which apparently does the auto-load, but then it also requires you to have all this extra stuff. And I'm like, mm, I don't really want more extra stuff. Especially scripted stuff. Because scripts start fighting and falling out with each other. And as I've learned this week on my multiplayer server, some script mods are actually really, really bad at the minute on PC. They're really not compatible with the current version of the game. Especially if they've not been updated since the um, patch. Last patch by Giants. There's a couple. There was um, Contractor HUD, um, which is a, sounds like a relatively simple little mod that just shows you up in the top left corner of the screen there, next to the weather forecast, if you've got any contracts active, how many and what percentage they are complete. Very handy little, little feature. Very unobtrusive. Saves you having to come into the contract screen to check on your contract progress all the time um or or at least in theory however i discovered yesterday evening on my multiplayer server he was causing all manner of trouble and problems with script errors and messing with things that i don't feel it had any reason to be messing with like I was doing some harvesting on my map. Came to sell the um, trailer full of stuff. Uh, got to the sell point and the trailer wouldn't unload. Didn't unload. Then all of a sudden all my harvested stuff just, 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 just disappeared into thin air. Poof! Trailer was suddenly empty, showing as empty. I thought that was weird. It was like the, the, it broke the animation. I thought for a minute it, it the animation was broke, the unloading animation, because it didn't show the trailer as unloading, but suddenly the trailer went to empty. But then I noticed I hadn't got paid for my stuff that I'd delivered. And I was like, that's a bit weird. So I drove all the way back to the farm, went to the silo to get another trailer of stuff. 
and couldn't fill the trailer. Silo would not fill. Could not fill. Well, that seems awfully weird. So at that point, I opened up my log and there was Lua Scripts galore coming from this contractor hook mod. So I immediately saved the game, logged out, stopped the server, deleted that mod, didn't turn it, disable it, completely deleted it from the server, restarted the server, opened up the game again, logged back in and found my trailer was still full of the original material that I'd harvested. It hadn't actually unloaded at all. It was still full. It, it just... The game had just glitched out and was showing me that the trailer was empty when it was actually still physically full. And that's why I hadn't been paid because I, technically I hadn't sold anything. So thankfully that wasn't a massive, massive problem. However, tonight I've discovered a slightly different problem. Whilst I was obviously playing last night, and whilst this script issue was going on, um, I was in the middle of doing some olive harvesting. I was harvesting olives, ladies and gents, on my lovely server. And I was unloading the olives into a trailer, parked at the side of the field every time the harvester got full. Um, whilst the whilst I had a worker doing the other harvest, which when I then tried to sell that, I discovered a problem. Had the, the problem. What I hadn't noticed whilst I was doing the olive harvesting um, was that because of the lure errors, the script errors, it it glitched out my um, my trailer that I was doing the olives with. And basically, as I emptied the olive harvester into the trailer, the trailer was converting all the olives into grapes. <laughs> when I went to my silo and tipped the trailer into the silo to store the olives, because I hadn't purchased the oil factory at that point, and I was like, I need to get the oil factory so I can start making like olive oil. So for the time being, I'll just save the olives in the silo. And it was at that point when I went to check how many olives I had actually harvested in total, I discovered the problem. Um, because instead of having like 16,000 litres of olives in my silo, I'd got 16,000 litres of grapes. And I was like, where's the grapes come from? <laughs> And that's when I realised, ah, it's turned my olives into grapes. And then what I've also then discovered as well tonight is I can't actually unload the grapes back out of the silo. I've got 16,000 litres of grapes in my silo, but sure as hell can't unload them <laughs> so it's like okay make a public note somewhere on the server for all players don't put grapes and olives in the silo and uh, check your trailer after harvesting very closely to make sure what you've harvested is actually what you've got in your trailer because if you've just harvested olives and you've got something else in your trailer, then something's gone wrong. Now, obviously, what I could have done is I could have rolled back to an earlier save before I started harvesting and started again. But I would have lost the whole evening of um, progress that I'd made. I made quite a bit of money last night with harvesting and contracting. and so I did, I'd played through several days played through November and December it was now in January so I was like I, I don't want to have to roll back the server roll back the save and start again so I've just kind of took it on the chin um, that I've harvested grapes got grapes that I can't do out with 
instead of olives. If I can't get them out of the silo, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, I've restarted the server tonight, but I've not logged back in yet to try and see if I can actually fill the trailer up. Worst comes to the worst, what I could do is download the save file from the server, open up the XMLs for the placeables, delete the grapes out of the silo, and then um, I could put them, add them to the import of the grape processing factory, which I do own now. I bought the grape factory just before I saved and exited tonight. So I now own the oil factory and the grape processing factories on the map. But that is all I own. Right, that's all the fields mode at this point, ladies and gents. I can now do some tedding. Can't pick the grass up yet. Because, unfortunately, uh, that's a good point. How do I get back out of this field? <laughs> uh, I don't have any way of picking up. I don't want to do hay bales because I don't really fancy leaving storing bales everywhere um, at this moment in time. Um... And I don't own a loading wagon. I might have to buy a loading wagon. Because then I can put hay loose into that little silo that I placed at the cow pen a couple of episodes ago. And then we can have hay on tap for when I get the cows added. Bring me mower units back. Does this feel ready for mowing too? Yes, it is. Okay. I'll leave that. I can come back to that another time. What I'm going to do... Some tedding mats. Wobbling about and weaving about all over the place. I can't remember if I like this trait, this, this tether or not. It's not the widest tether available, but it is one of the fastest. And I figured again, with a Lamborghini, we can get the job done quicker. You know, speed and power. <laughs> I haven't got my rake yet. My wind rower. I'm going to get the, the front mounted rake unit thingy. The bobby. And then I can probably use that with the class. Because then if I get a loading wagon. I can have the loading wagon on the back of the class. The rake on the front. I can be wind rowing as I'm picking up. There we go, ladies and gents. Getting our first hay produced. Which 
sure I don't miss any. Overlap a bit. It's all good fun. Oh, jolly good fun. Again, it's strange how things have gone with Farming Simulator in terms of my own interaction with the game in that I actually find grass work to be quite enjoyable now. I can spend hours mowing grass, doing silage, doing hay, doing bales, doing loose. Um, I don't mind cutting fields. In fact, I really, really enjoy m mowing fields. But I understand that the viewing community out there, the farm sim viewers, the watchers, like your good selves who are viewing these videos, probably wouldn't appreciate if I just spent every video mowing grass. <laughs> but I do a lot of it. I, I'm all across all my saves. I do a lot of mowing. Even the multiplayer server, I do a lot of mowing. And I, I really enjoy it. I find it very de-stressing. You know, again, I guess because of the seasons mode in the game now and the longer wait between planting crops and harvesting crops, you, you kind of have to fall back on, well, what can I do in between that? And the grass is the one thing that gives you plenty of regular work. You know, especially if you go to the trouble like in my other saves where I roll the thick grass fields after I've mowed them. On this save, I'm not rolling grass fields. I'm just fertilizing, spraying them, and then letting them regrow on in their own time, at their own leisure. But in, in, in like how Baylor on, and like the multiplayer server, roll the field after mowing it. It's like a whole other process that just takes time and passes a couple of, you know, many hours in game, maybe even a day in game and allows you to get to the next harvest window or the next seeding window oh uh, yeah grass mowing i'm actually enjoying a lot more in farm sim 22 than in past farm sims Despite the fact that I really haven't really got that far and deep into the animal side of things yet in Farm Sim 22. You know, I'm doing sheep and I'm doing chickens. I still, ladies and gentlemen, still at this point in time, March 2022, four months after the release of the game, I still have yet to start doing cows on any of my saves or any of my maps. I haven't got into the whole cow system yet and seeing what changes have come with that. Um, so, most of the stuff I'm producing, cutting the grass for, it's kind of for myself, really. You know, in How Baylor on, I, I, I make silage purely to sell in November, when silage is at the best price on that map. Um, and silage actually is one of my big big income bringers each year um, that I get off my fields because most of the other crops that I grow go into the production so I don't sell a lot of the stuff that I grow on the fields there's only soybeans that I grow each year that I sell because they're not used in any production and So yeah, silage, making silage off the grass that comes off the land that I've got is a, a good way of, you know, bringing in an income each year along with the the soybeans when they get sold every, I think it's June when the soybeans are at their best price. So I have to hang on to the soybeans for like nearly a year after I've harvested them. I mean, they still bring in probably the most money. They're still probably the best, most, the most expensive crop that I, that I, I grow. Um, 
is soybeans. And I'm going to have bigger fields on that map. I'm going to move the soybeans to bigger fields in the future. So that my yield, soybean yield will be even higher, which means every year then when I sell them, I'm going to be making even more money, more profit, because I'll have more to sell. At the same time, I'm going to be able to keep my productions running, hopefully, 12 months of the year. Because I won't have run out of um, flour and things, which is the case now on How Baylor On. I've run out of stuff, materials. This map, I'm start of running out of materials. Um, I don't think I've got any canola in my oil mill. So we're not making any canola oil now. Um, I've run out of flour, so I'm not producing any more flour. So the, whatever flour I've got, the bakery is consuming that as we go. Um, obviously, I've got no sh more sugar beets because I haven't done any contracts. So whatever sugar I've got in the sugar factory is it. <laughs> and I've yet to restock my bakery with the purchase material. So I've got no butter... I've got no strawberries, so I can't make any cakes yet. I've got no milk. Um, otherwise, I'd be, I, I could say I'd be making cakes as well as bread. I was just a bit concerned the fact that I've only got 263,000 in the bank and I need to buy myself a rake and I need to buy myself a loading wagon. I was like, mm, if I go and fill my bakery up with products, that's going to be all my money gone. And then it'll be a couple of months before I make that money back from selling the products. Plus, we're getting into the summer. And those products are now starting to get down in price. A lot of the, the food products that I make, their best price is in the winter. When people are hungry and eating it. <laughs> So it's all about But obviously I've not sold my wool yet from my sheep. That, that I've just kept pushed that to one side at the minute over at the sheep pen. I'm gonna wait till I've got a full full load from the sheep before I see about selling that somewhere on the map. Deciding where to sell my wool. The eggs. Again, at the minute, I'm just dividing the eggs up, or I was dividing the eggs up between the bakery and the uh, and selling them. Um, however, because obviously I'm not making cakes now, and therefore won't be consuming any eggs in the bakery, future eggs from the chickens will all be going to the sell point. The next, the next big, big, the next big purchase for me. Um, the next thing I want to buy is land. Okay, I want to get some more fields now of my own, so I can start growing crops to sell. Actual market crops, not crops for production. So things like corn. I want to be selling. Growing that, selling that. Maybe soybeans, growing that, selling that. I won't necessarily mind doing some, maybe some root crops down the road. Doing some potatoes. You know? Although typically you only have to do one potato harvest and you're set for life because you end up with millions of them. can see me getting very into that.
Right, there we go. Three fields nicely tedded. I'm going to keep the tedder over here at the cow farm. Rather than with the, the mower. But the, um, the sheeps. In the, in the old jockey jumping field. The former jockey jumping field. Um, I'm going to keep the uh, tedder over here. Because I think this is where we will primarily be using it. I was thinking, you know, of buying a, a grass. So there are a couple of grass fields on this map. Actual, like, proper grass fields. Um, which are not terribly expensive. And then I couldn't, I wouldn't have to necessarily mess around so much with these little fields. You know, I would almost be tempted sell them little fields there and there and instead i would like to buy maybe a field 10 which is a grass field which is 230,000 great big proper fit grass field or a field 7 which is a massive grass field or there's even field 22 over here is a grass field proper grass field next to field 23 and where my secret meadow is that's probably that would keep all my grass stuff then in this area confined to maybe this part of the map maybe we could lose this these silly little fields keep maybe eight um but we'll see we'll see as time goes on Right, I'm just going to drop these off now. The mower unit and the... Obviously, I still need to mow this field behind me. But we can do that another day. You know? Another day. Another dollar. I think what we do now is we quickly race to the store. Might be closed by the time we get there, but we want to get a rake and we want to get a loading wagon. Ooch. And then we can start pick. We can pick up all the loose hay and as well as the um, the grass that I've got as well on the secret meadows, which are going to go into the silage bunker at the cows so we're going to end the video today folks by spending some money <laughs> and we'll put our beacons on just for a bit of a disco as well to end the episode Oh, I do love the third person mod. I don't know if I've said that. Right, we want a rake. So. I think the best rake in the game, without a shadow of a doubt, right now is this one. Buying it. Bearing in mind, that's 10.3 meters. Requires 20 horsepower and travels at 18 kilometers an hour. This one, 6 meters, 4 meters left, requires 4 times the horsepower.
I'm going to have that one. Right. Forage wagon then. And we go for the Pottinger. Go for. I think I'm going to go for one of these ones. No, it's not massive. Do I want silage additive? If I'm doing silage manually, yes, I do. Um, that's 105 grand of my monies. That's expensive. We don't have to worry now it's about the silage additive at the minute because we're going to start by picking up the hay. That's what I'm going to start work on today. We do the hay fields first as they're the ones nearest the silo. And then I'm going to move on to the silage. Because the silage I'll probably do off camera. The grass, picking up the grass for that because that's going to be long driving sessions from the fields back to the uh, cow pen put the uh, grass in the bunker it's not easy to see with these trees is it that's why i kind of like the first person camera but i just hate the fact that for some whatever reason it's broken in the lambo and it's only the Lambo that's affected. And weirdly, the first person camera works. If I reset the, the vehicle, if I reset it, it fixes it. For a moment. Okay. And then the minute I hop out of the Lamborghini again, The minute I hop out of the Lamborghini and hop back in, camera's broken again. weird that it puts the swath offset. Have you noticed that? I've had, uh, someone else commented that recently as well about swath dropping vehicles and equipment. It doesn't seem to drop the swath in the middle. It seems to drop it slightly offset to one side. It's a bit weird. That's why I think loading wagons and balers can end up missing bits. Especially if they're like following a programmed course that a vehicle has taken. Like if you're doing course play, for example, and you've done like harvesting with a harvester, and then you have a baler or loading wagon load the same course and follow the same path that the harvester took, it tends to miss bits because the harvester's dropping the swath offset to one side. I appreciate I'm not picking up anymore. I'm just wind rowing. <laughs> okay. I got full. And if someone said to me, why did you go for this loading wagon instead of the one with the bigger capacity? I'm trying to keep the weight down. I think it's going to be a bit easier for me to haul this trailer around if I'm not carting 68,000 litres of stuff in it. I could have gone for the bigger loading wagon, definitely, but I think, A, 
it might have been a bit difficult to get it in and out of the gates because of its length. And B, um, I think the weight would make it very difficult for me. I also appreciate getting into these silos is going to be a challenge. Might have to fold up a few more times. The ground's taken a bit of a battering there because of the rain flattening that I did. Try and fit that silo in. I was having real issues. Now there's a, like a funny little hump. Little ridge at the side of the, the, the road because the road is an actual object placed on the map. It's not painted. It's not part of the terrain. So it's an actual physical object that I can't move. So th it's trying to raise and lower the terrain to blend in with the road. And that is very awkward to do with the, um, the terrain tools in the game. Even the modified tools, the mods that supposedly let you move terrain anywhere, even they seem to glitch out a little bit on the road edges. They don't like going all the way to the road edges. Guess what? We'll, we'll just fill another load here. Eighteen kilometers an hour is the speed of the rake, by the way. So it's me towing the loading wagon isn't making me any slower. I'm I'm limited in speed by the windrower, actually, not the loading wagon. It's the it's the it's the rake slowing me down from doing this really really fast. To there look yeah you can see the little dark green ridge but actually it's not a ridge it's an actual hole it's a gap between the road object and the terrain that's been leveled and flattened by placing that silo I could probably try and even if I take a level from somewhere to the right of the tractor and level it back towards the road, I might be able to fix that. But I'll be I'll be I'll be quite honest, I'm not having as much joy and success with the uh with the with the old landscaping tools in farm sim 22 i don't find the landscaping tools to be all that user friendly in this year's version of the game 
It's why I'm really not tending to do a lot of terraforming on my maps. Although, saying that, I am thinking of doing a massive project on how Baylor on soon. <laughs> but that's for discussion another time in a how Baylor on video. For now, folks, we've reached the end of today's Calmston Farm episode, where I'm going to carry on collecting the hay. I hope you've all enjoyed today's video. If you have, you know what to do. Click the like button. Subscribe if you're not doing so already. Leave me a comment in the comment section down below. And share the video everywhere you can with everyone you can. I've been C. Wally. Take care of yourselves, everybody. Stay safe. Goodbye for now.